Hey, so, so, baby. What's up? First of all, congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for being the first. Sorry, uh, sorry, <laughs> but I'm thrilled that we waited for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No knock on anybody, but I'm thrilled that it was you, because uh, I, I love your writing. I think you funny and smart. Thank but you, you said time. that this was a huge win, but you said it was bigger. Oh, yeah. You know, it's interesting, because I remember watching a uh, uh, very memorable Oscars that you were hosting mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. Holly Berry, mm -hmm. you know, uh, broke that door. So interesting, because no one's followed her since, which is really unfortunate. But I remember watching that speech and her making it about Everyone. Mm -hmm. She gave. She paid homage to people like Dorothy Dandridge and Lena Horne and um, like things like that. And people mm -hmm. next to her. To me, it's like I know I'm not the first black woman to write a funny half-hour mm -hmm. script. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that <laughs> it, you know the business sort of you know, the, the stars had to align, and I think I ended up being the vessel. Uh, so I just want to make sure I shared that moment with people like Susan Fells Hill, yes. Yvette mm -hmm. Lee Bowser. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yes. You know. Because they've been doing it. They've been beating these doors for so long. They so when have. I came up, I just had to kind of push it with a finger and walk Timing. through. Yeah. Timing. Yeah. 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 Timing. Well, one of your first jobs as mm -hmm. the, was uh, working as the assistant director to Gina Prince Blythewood, who directed Love and yeah, Basketball, Gina one Prince of my Blythewood. favorite movies. Yeah. Um, and she gave you a task that involved Whoopi. Yes, she did. Lovely Gina. Uh, <laughs> my first week working for Gina. Uh, and I was her assistant. I was her personal assistant. So usually this means somebody said, go get this, go get that. You got to go do that, figure it out. It's my first week, though. And she, I'm at the house, the big house, and she's like, uh, get Whoopi Goldberg on the phone. I'm like, cool, all right. Like, <laughs> where's the number? Who you want me to dial? You want me to get to sale, or what's up? She's like, no, I don't have, I don't have no number. I'm like, you don't have a number or anything? She's like, no, nah, but I need you to get me her on the phone. So I'm like, okay, here we are. It's the Black Devil Wears Prada. We're in it. <laughs> uh, we figured it out. So I just called The View. I called here. I got some security person on the phone that hung up on me, and rightfully so, because <laughs> if a person just called saying, look, I need to get to Whoopi Goldberg, <laughs> of course they're going to hang up. So then I called back a couple times. I was trying to get a black person so they could tell I'm black. <laughs> And just be like, look. And I finally got something. I was like, I can, I can tell. Like, look, I can tell you're a brother. <laughs> look, I'm your sister. <laughs> like, I need you to help me so I can keep this job and live my dream. <laughs> so then he was just like, okay, well, she don't have a cell phone. I said, okay, that don't help me. He was like, but I can get you this to this person. I said, okay, cool. I called that person. The person answered the phone. It was a guy. He was like, okay, uh, let me call you back. Uh, and I said, okay. So I sat there in the office and I waited. The phone rang. He said, I got Whoopi. I said, perfect. I said, I got, like, I got Gina. They're connected. Boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I was sweating. I was sweating. I'm like, oh man, I was a young black girl from Chicago trying to get Whoopi Goldberg on the phone. But well, the, thank you. We got the, it. We had it done. Yes, we did. But what's the what is the thing that you want people to know about that? Oh story? man, is that you know what? You can't give up. You got to use yes. whatever you got. Yeah. You know. And persist. Yes. Uh -huh. Persist. Yes. Yeah. You gotta be persistent. Really it's a very important Truly. lesson that people think is just talent. It's really about persistence. Yeah, Absolutely. man. And also, yeah. too, you, like, you can't, you gotta be humble. You gotta figure it out. And I think once I was able to get that done in my first week, I was yeah. like, oh, I can get anything done. Yeah. 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 The rest is light work. Yeah. That's right. Humility like is a superhero. Yeah. Like, I got Whoopi Goldberg on the phone with no number. <laughs> <laughs> I made it happen. So let's talk about the um, the essence of Black Women in Hollywood oh, yeah. Awards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because you were honored a few weeks ago. And yeah. in the speech, you said, being born gay, black, and female, it's not a revolutionary act, but being proud to be a gay black female. Oh, is. I love that. What, tell us what you mean. Elaborate. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I think it's very interesting. And here's my real, you know, truth. If you think about Hollywood, there's a lot of people in Hollywood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about how many black people there are in Hollywood. It's a nice little number, especially we're growing now. Think about how many out gay black people there are in Hollywood. Mm. Not a probably, lot. Probably you can count them on your yeah. one or two hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. The numbers don't add up. And I think what's happening is there are you people... You mean it's, not, it's a term that there are more gay people in the country, and it's not relative to this. It's like too Yeah, low. I'm just yeah, talking about in terms of people yeah. of color being gay. It's like, it's what, me, Wanda, Rue, you know? It's like <laughs> Titus. Yeah. It's like, I think there's, there's a lot of us, but a lot of us don't want to necessarily be public about it. There's still this thing of like, well, it's my private life. But I think, honestly, like, we have to be a bit of a beacon of light for uh -huh. those young kids of color mm -hmm. who are wondering, like, am I weird? Is something wrong with me? 
Um, what kind of what quality of life might I have? So for me, I mean, I I don't even think of what I'm doing as very revolutionary. I don't know how to not be gay as hell or yeah. black as hell. That's <laughs> just who I am. Um, but I think there's an element of some people that kind of figure like, well, I don't want to ostracize yeah. anybody, and I'm well, like, no. Nah. Well, like, I don't want to be cast as uh, gay. You know, yeah. that's the I love problem. it. I made a yeah. wonderful career being cast yeah. as a lesbian. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, yeah. but oddly but, enough, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, and it's like you know, it's great to have allies. You know what I'm saying? But I think honestly, I'm just kind of over it a little bit. And I think my thing is, is like, I want to be here to hold somebody's hand and be supportive mm -hmm. because the more of us there are, the more of these, and also for black folks in the community for them to see, because black folks love me. They're like, Aliva's oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, if your niece or your nephew or your daughter or mm -hmm. your son, right. then we're made up of the same stuff. We right. got to talk about this because you are now the creator and executive producer of the Showtime series, The Shot. Shot, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's wonderful. It's about life on the south side of Chicago. Oh, yeah. um, the city where you actually grew up. And we had Common on the show yeah. um, a couple of weeks ago. He's also an executive producer. Yeah. Um, and he, he talked about it a few weeks ago. What do you hope people will take away from watching this fantastic series? You know, that black people are no longer three-fifths of human beings. Mm. That we are Well, they never fully, were. We, exactly. But there are some people that still sometimes forget. <laughs> that we wake up in the morning, we raise our kids, we try to get to church when we can, we try mm -hmm. to be good contributing members of society. Mm -hmm. And I think that we rarely see black folks just contemplating, just living, just being. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really want to show that. I really wanted to show us just living everyday life. And yes, I don't shy away from the complexities of what's going on in Chicago. I understand that we have our issues. Yeah. And, I, and I, I show that. But I also want to show the aftermath of that. I wasn't really interested in showing the police. I want to show people who are being policed. Mm -hmm. And I really want to show what the community looks like. Because right. the co community I grew up in Chicago was very much a village. Mm -hmm. Our grandmother had, you know, block club meetings and, like, mm -hmm. neighborhood watches. We policed ourselves. Yeah. Well, you've done um, a very yeah. good job of yeah. doing Thank that. you so much. So now I... I... Go ahead, Joy. <laughs> well, uh, we were talking about timing before. Uh -huh. And uh, you wrote this show, Shy, when uh, Obama was president. Yeah. But it mm -hmm. didn't air until Trump. What do you yeah. think about that? Is that good or bad? Uh, <laughs> I think it's good. Yeah. I think it's really good. Uh, I think, and look, I really wrote, because I was reading a lot of James Baldwin at the time, and, no. and, and the way he told our stories <laughs> mm -hmm. and really saw the God in black yeah. people. Uh -huh. And I really was like, I was inspired by that, so I wanted to do it. And, and, um, and then, obviously, by the time the show came out, we had Trump in office, who was definitely using Chicago as sort of a pawn in, in mm -hmm. his sort of political game. And I was, yeah, I'm right. happy that people can see Chicago in a, in a in new a light. Yeah, yeah, they just yeah. talk you about know? it as if it's yeah. constant gangs and, yeah. and but that's violence. Me. That's red meat. Yeah. That's red, red meat for a group of people who don't know better. But they right. will because they'll watch the so show. Watch yeah. the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. But now, you are... You are in Steven Spielberg, starring in yeah. Steven Spielberg's uh, new film, yeah. Ready yeah. Player One. Yeah. We had that uh, it premiered, <laughs> yes, we <had> first. <laughs> premiered at uh, South by Southwest West to rave reviews. Yeah, they liked it. <laughs> and, uh, how could you not? How could you not? You know, did you find him extraordinary to work with quickly? Man, look, he's a giant that doesn't make people feel small. That's right. He's oh, a Jewish wow. father. I never knew I needed him. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That is and there you have it. You, know, you have to come back. You have to come back. Please do. Uh, the season finale of The Shy is this Sunday on Showtime. I'll be live. Ready Player One, baby. It's going to be in theaters in IMAX on March 29th. Please go. Go see it. It is one of the fine things you can watch in a theater.